Hey guys, welcome to Degrees of Shining. So today, what I'm gonna do is give you a behind the scenes tour of my studio space. I promised Peg, who is Bitter Pearl 1310, that I would do this a while ago, so I thought today would be the perfect day to do that. Happy New Year, and let's take a walk around. Okay, so this is my studio space. It doubles as my art studio and makeup studio and office space. And it's just a very small room, and you'll see I actually painted the walls this fantastic green. I got these appliques from Hobby Lobby that I've been meaning to put up on the wall, and maybe I'll get to that. Plant, my guitar, which needs to be fixed. I have to fix the pegs. I broke a peg and need to replace that. And here's my chaise long. This is a huge chair that I love to sit in. I'll read and knit and watch uh, movies, which I can do with this setup here. I have a monitor that's hooked up to a DVD player and then also my cable, so... I can actually sit in the chair and relax, and you'll see somebody is already sitting and relaxing in my chair, and either he will be here, or he'll sit up on the back of the chair, or he'll sit in that chair when I get up and leave a warm spot. I have a few pieces of artwork. I need to go back and actually hang some more stuff on the wall. I just haven't had a chance to lately. Self-portrait that I did a few years ago, a mask from a ball last year called the Beau Art Ball. My disco ball, disco ball, woo! -hoo! Uh, this is a piece of artwork done by Helen Harden. I'm sorry for the glare. This is called Changing Woman. She was a Santa Clara Pueblo Indian and just a phenomenal fine artist. Um, she passed away in 1984 from breast cancer. Okay, so this is my workspace, and usually what I do is uh, what you're seeing is the aftermath of New Year's Eve. Of course, I did post the tutorial for the look that I created to go out. Uh, sparkly, glittery, purple look. But what I did was, instead of putting things away as I film, which is usually what I do, I left it out for you to see the aftermath. So usually it's a, the space is a little bit neater than this. And you'll see I just left everything out that I could possibly have used for the look. So did my nails. I picked up some new nail color from Sally Hansen. I do love Sally Hansen nail colors. They're inexpensive. You can get them buy one, get get one free. Um, these are the colors that I'm wearing on my nails right now. Pretty pale pink and then a glitter over that on the nails. Products that I use on my face prior to putting on my foundation. Those pigments that I bought, I actually did use a couple of them last night. The dark purple and the kitchmas. Love these. I love these little containers. This is a really good buy. For $32, you get five pigments. I would never use the $20 container that they sell, Max sells. So, you know, that's a good buy. I love this. This is the Urban Decay Book of Shadows 2. Um, Anne or Shine and I, Anne, always, um, we, we agree that Urban Decay is really quite hip right now, and their pricing is very good. And this was a really good bargain. It came with uh, two eyeliners and a primer potion. I haven't used these yet because I actually have a full bottle still of the primer potion. And I use both of these 24-7 pencils religiously, the black and the bourbon, which is a dark, sparkly brown. And uh, so this is kind of the setup okay, that I so use. so the lamps that I use are just two lamps. This is an Ikea lamp with a full-spectrum bulb. And then this lamp I found at Bed Bath & Beyond for like $12, and it came with a full-spectrum bulb in it as well. And the reason I use those types of bulbs when I do my makeup looks is that it creates truer light, natural light. So when you're putting your makeup on, you know, you can tell if it's going on too heavy or not dark enough. Um, and also it shows you colors true to what they should be. I like that. I, you know, you should be able to see what I really look like. You should be able to see the colors. The okay, way so looking. behind the lighting and the setup that I have here is an inspiration board. It's just a giant bulletin board. And you'll see I have all this stuff on it. The latest look that I did was that siren look, Thexalopia the siren. And so I gathered a whole bunch of images, including lionfish, and then I sketched out the makeup that I ended up doing on my face, other things that inspired me. So this is uh, an artwork done by Audrey Kawasaki, lovely, super fantastic artist. I think she just had a, a show in New York not too long ago, just before Christmas. Other images craft store stuff so you know like I was telling you before I'll deconstruct feather stems and floral stems from Hobby Lobby and Michaels and Joann's to just create you know headpieces, barrettes, jewelry, you name it. I think the craft store can be your best friend. Color wheel for, com for combining colors, other stems from Hobby Lobby. My friend Eric, hi Eric, how are you? Um, just you know a lot of fun. You can deconstruct and then reconstruct. And then what I do is, I, when I'm done with a look, I usually take down everything that I've done recently. I left it up so I could show you. 
and then I'll start okay. putting up new over things. here on the floor I have a project that I've been meaning to do for a while and that is to organize all of my inspiration stuff as I go ahead and do research and collect images and type up things I end up putting them in a binder and I have this huge binder that just became overstuffed completely. So what I'm going to do is I have prepared these binders and sometime in the next few days I'll actually get this done hopefully for the new year. Fantasy, Mac, and then I also have a face of the day or just you know everyday look binder. And then down here I have all of this stuff. So of course I created an eye chart of my own a doodle that's similar to the shape of my eye. And then with that you know, I use that to sketch and play, make notes on things that kind of inspire me or if I see things. So this is actual eye charts that I've created. And they're just in black and white. You can do anything in color that you can that you draw in black and white. So this is a black and white image, but you can take color and create the same kind of contouring, the same kinds of effects with the color. So if you can do it in black and white, you can do it in color is what I'm saying. So just some sketches that I've done. And then notes, uh, sometimes if I'm sitting in a boring meeting, don't tell my boss, I'll actually sit and come up with ideas and sketch things out. And then from magazines and various books that I've read, you know, I just grab ideas and copy and print out and then put them in this binder. Advertisements from magazines. Um, also, you know, what we think is new is often retro, so this Beyonce look, and then recent campaigns in various magazines are based on 1960s makeup. So this is from 1960s, this awesome model, had a really neat look. This is an iconic image. You'd, you'd be amazed at what gets recycled and reused over and over again. Something you think is original is actually from a few years ago. So just binders of stuff. Lots of images. Down here, looks that I've actually done. So this is that Airte, and I have other images by Airte that I'd like to go back and create looks with. Nina Flowers, Mamba, who uh, Jazzy, 123, 123 Jazzy 13 did an awesome Mamba look as well. I have to credit her a little bit for helping me come up with my Mizadori idea. So thank you for that, Jazzy. The owl that I did, Archimedes. I have a thing for cats, so I would say for Halloween next year, don't be surprised if you see a lot more cats in my makeup. Maybe some birds, some more fantasy. So all of these will go in my fantasy binder that I've created.